Okay, now in this video, I want to show you how to paint the line art or underneath the line art. Basically, we're going to use this color work layer that we created earlier to, uh, to add our, our color, our painting, and then the line art will appear on top. So the main thing to remember, you need to select the color work layer, make sure that's selected. Uh, and then of course, select your brush tool. Uh, B on your keyboard is the shortcut and then decide which uh, brush and which color you want. Now I could right click on the canvas and choose my pop-up palette and I've got my brushes here. Uh, this is a wet brush, a wet paint brush. Uh, or I could choose it from up here, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and the same with the color, I can choose the color from up here. And let's say I want to paint my little critter uh, purple color. Uh, I can choose it from there or I can choose it from here. Okay, it doesn't really matter which way, whatever's easier for you. Okay, so this is the trick with painting. If I zoom in a bit, um, it's really important to remember to, to zoom in. Uh, let me zoom in here. And remember, to zoom in, you can either use the, uh, the space bar and the command key together, or you can just tap on the plus symbol or the minus symbol on your keyboard. And then if you want to move around, just hold the space bar, you get this little hand, and that lets you move the canvas around so you can see what you're doing. All right, now, the, what happens when you paint on the color work layer, which is the transparent one underneath the line art, is you get something that looks like this. In fact, I'll bring the opacity right up, and you can see that the line is appearing over the top of the painting. Um, if you accidentally had the wrong layer, let's say you didn't, didn't realize you had the line art selected, well, you're going to paint directly over the line art, which you don't want. Now, thankfully, we've got Command Z, which we can undo our moves, which is very important. All right, I'm just going to move back a little bit, so just bear with me so we can see the critter. Now, the challenge, of course, is um, painting all around the shapes that you see here. And it could take a long time if you do it the old-fashioned way, meaning if I click on the line, um, the color work layer, and I start painting, okay, I'll be here for a, a long time. And then I've got the other problem of uh, making sure it doesn't go over the lines. Um, and of course, then you come down to this area here where the uh, circles are, and I've got to make my brush smaller. I can use the square bracket key to do that on the keyboard. The square brackets makes it smaller. Or I can go up here and choose the size thing here. Or I can right click and choose the size of my brush uh, here. So there's lots of ways you can do it. But um, yeah, you can appreciate this is gonna take a long time. So I'm just going to undo that and go back to normal, back, back to the beginning. There is an easier way, and that is using a selection tool. Uh, now, the way this works is you select an area that is closed off. Uh, this only works if the area is closed off, it's a closed shape. And the tool that I'm talking about is this one here that looks, uh, is it this one? Yeah, I think it's this one here. The one that looks like a, um, a sparkler. Um, it's called, if I just hover over the top, okay, where's the name? I think it's called the continuous uh, selection tool. Anyway, let's see if it works. I'm going to select it. And I'll go back to my line art because that's actually where the lines live. And let me click on the horn. Now, you can barely see it, but it is actually selected. See that? Now, if I click somewhere else, like the body of the critter, it's now selected. If I click on the tooth, it's now selected. If I want, if I want to click on more than one tooth, I hold down the shift key and it lets me select more than one area. Okay. Now, in Photoshop, this tool is called the magic wand. So let's just say I've selected all the teeth and I want to turn them white or another color. You have to remember, after you've selected an area, you have to remember to go back to your color layer. And then you choose the color that you want. In this case, it's white, maybe an off-white. And then I can fill that by going either to the edit menu and choosing fill with foreground color. Um, let's make it wider than that. Okay. I can either go fill with foreground color or I can uh, press 
shift delete that will do it uh, if I change that to purple shift delete will fill it uh, or I can use the brush tool while it's selected and while I'm on this color work layer I can use the brush tool and it will only paint within the selection so that's the teeth now being colored with the foreground color and the brush tool and making sure that the color work layer is selected now to deselect it um, it's really tricky uh, you have to go up here to deselect or the shortcut is shift command a um, and you can see it's deselected so let's try another color and another body part once again go back to the line art once again choose your brush tool and the color that you want and let's stick with purple uh, sorry I'm skipping uh, I'm jumping ahead then you go to the uh, continuous uh, uh, selection tool which I want to call the magic wand and let me click on the uh, body okay and I don't know if you can see but I've actually selected all the body uh, minus the little circles and if I zoom in you'll see what I mean um, you can see that the selection is actually going around their circles. So I can trust that Krita has selected just the body. And now I go back to the color work layer. I've got my color purple, get it in the right order con, brush tool, and I can either go and fill it with the automatic uh, option here, fill with foreground color, or I can go shift delete. Command Z, or I can paint it with my brush tool and I'll make it nice and big and watch this. Um, now this is the wet paint, so it's a bit it's a bit weird this uh, this brush. Uh, let me change brush. I, I'm, I'm not really ha happy with that one. Let's go for a chalky one. Okay, and uh, full opacity. Okay, so now what it's doing, it's uh, it's painting within the selected area because I've still got it selected. Okay, so now I'm painting uh, my flat color and I'm happy with that. So I've got my teeth, I've got the body part um, in a purple and now I can deselect it or not. Maybe I want to keep it selected and maybe um, I've got more coloring to do. And let's, let's just try something. Let's go in here and change that to a green. Uh, let's go for this type of green. Let's bring the opacity down and let's see what happens when I add a little bit of green to the side of the critter. Okay, you can sort of see it's changing color. Let's change that to a yellow. And here we go. We're having fun. Now it's still selected, so that's why it knows to paint within the area. And uh, this is the chalky brush. And of course, you've got to experiment with this because uh, depending on the brush that you use, you're going to get a different uh, result, a different pattern. Okay, now let's bring in some red. I just feel like bringing in some red right now. Uh, what I like about the chalky brush, and again, combined with the opacity, uh, it gives you that sort of really hand-painted, um, really handmade feel. So now you've got a combination of purple, yellow, green, and um, red. And if you want to change your uh, paint at any stage, uh, your paintbrush, by all means, you can go from one to the other. Let's see what, um, whoop, that's too dark. Sorry, Command Z. See how popular Command Z is? Okay, this is called the wet bristles. Uh, maybe that's too light. Let's just try that. Uh, let's go for a real obvious change. I'll choose this cyan blue. Okay, and uh, bring the opacity back up a little bit. All right, I don't know if you can see what's happening. There's a bit of blue coming in now. So I'm just having a bit of fun with this selected area. Now, if for some reason I have deselected, let's say I've accidentally gone deselect, um, I can't select it again with a magic wand. It's almost impossible because you can see what's happening. It needs to be a flat area. Uh, I can go back to the line art and select it again that way and now switch back to color work. Or the other way I can do it is, um, I'll just deselect that. I can actually uh, select nothing at all. And if I hide, if I hide the, li the line art layer, you can see that's the painting that I've done. That's just by hiding the line art. Do you remember the alpha channel lock that we did with the apple? 
if you switch that on, that's the alpha channel, um, it'll only let you paint within that, e that area again. So if I change my color, uh, whoops, not gradient, hang on, sorry. Let's go for, uh, let's go for a really light um, creamy green here, yeah, there we go. So if I start to paint, because I've switched on the alpha lock with this thing here, it'll still only let me paint within the selected area. So whatever was um, painted before, it'll only let me paint within that, which is pretty good. If I, if I didn't have that on, then of course I'm going to paint outside the area, which you don't want to do. So there's a few things to remember there, but have a bit of fun with that. Uh, open up the, uh, the layer with your Critter outline drawing and have a practice in colouring it in. And I'll talk to you a little bit later on.